Bitcoin has just skyrocketed past 30,000, breaking its resistance and challenging the $35,000 level. This comes after some very interesting developments on the Spot Bitcoin ETF news. However, there are also other very interesting factors playing a role here, such as new stimulus from China and the upcoming halving event. So, first of all, let's have a look at what has catalyzed this recent move in Bitcoin. So, if we turn back the clock to October 13th, this is when hope for a Bitcoin ETF really started to pick up. On October 13th, the SEC did not appeal a court ruling that said that the SEC had arbitrarily denied Grayscale's ETF application. What happened is that Grayscale applied for an ETF, it was denied by the SEC, and, the, and then Grayscale appealed this denial. The SEC rejected this application on the grounds that Grayscale could not protect investors from fraud. However, Grayscale pointed out that there are already a lot of mechanisms in Bitcoin futures that could be used to prevent market manipulation. So, Grayscale appealed the ruling and the court actually sided with Grayscale. The SEC then had some time to appeal this ruling, but decided not to on Friday, October the 13th, prompting speculation that the SEC is in fact getting ready to approve a Bitcoin ETF. More recently, we have got even more signs that a Bitcoin ETF could be almost imminent. BlackRock, which as we know has a great track record of getting ETFs approved, has just listed its iShares Bitcoin Trust on the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation. What does this mean exactly? It means that BlackRock is taking steps towards launching its ETF. BlackRock has listed its ETF on the DTCC, and the iShares Bitcoin Trust even has a ticker now, IBTC. In simple terms, the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation is a mechanism by which ETFs can function and be launched to the public. On top of that, Eric Balkanus from Bloomberg noted that in BlackRock's latest amendment to the ETF filing done on October 18th, the company had even mentioned a specific date for the fund to be funded or seeded. Blogwood said, The filing also contained language that seed creation baskets were to be purchased in October, subject to conditions, but did not specify a date or amount. In other words, BlackRock is getting ready to launch the ETF, and in order to do this, they have to at least fund it a little bit, which of course would create buying pressure on Bitcoin. However, it's important to note that as of today, we haven't actually seen any activity from BlackRock. We have no confirmation that they've actually gone ahead and bought the Bitcoin. So the current move is probably a result of investors preempting this move by BlackRock. Now, on top of that, we also got some words from MicroStrategy which has just turned positive on its Bitcoin holdings and said they would be doubling down and buying even more Bitcoin in the coming months. Perhaps out of sheer luck, or perhaps because of careful planning, I believe that this Bitcoin ETF launch comes at a perfect timing. On the one hand, as we well know, the Bitcoin halving is estimated to come in around 170 days, which means that based on previous halving cycles, Bitcoin should begin a bull run. We can see that this happened in previous halving cycles like in 2020, 2016 and 2012. Usually Bitcoin goes through three phases. It runs up after the halving cycle, then enters a bear market and then it enters a consolidation slash distribution period. Right now we have been kind of in a distribution period even though Bitcoin has doubled in the last few months and it is possible that we could be entering the bull phase in the coming months if we're not already starting it. On the other hand, this is a very important factor and one that I think has gone unnoticed by investors, and that is that China is actually issuing record amounts of liquidity injections. As we can see in this chart by Bloomberg, the PBOC has boosted short-term cash injections to a record. The Chinese economy has been struggling over the last few months, and both the PBOC and the Chinese government have been looking at ways of stimulating this economy. One way of doing this is, of course, by injecting liquidity. We already saw the PBOC lower rates on their lending facilities, and now we're seeing direct injections into the market. Of course, these injections increase overall liquidity. One of the biggest beneficiaries of this is Bitcoin. I actually wrote about this at the start of the year, when both markets and Bitcoin began to rally on the back of a $1 trillion stimulus in global liquidity. Lastly, it's also interesting to note that the recent rally in Bitcoin is coinciding with weakness in banks yet again. Going back to March of this year, you remember that we had some issues with regional banks and some bank failures such as Silvergate. While banks were at threaded collapse, we actually saw Bitcoin do very well, perhaps because investors were considering Bitcoin a safety trade. Now, interestingly, we can see a similar correlation that has been happening in the last few months. Of course, the whole stock market has been suffering because of higher rates, and this has taken a toll on banks. In fact, recent bank earnings have once again brought to light the issue of unrealized losses on their balance sheet and the overall issue of financial health of the system. So as we can see in this chart, 
Well, the KRE, which is the index for regional banks, has been falling since around September. Bitcoin has actually been doing quite well. With that said, it seems quite clear that there are a lot of fundamental factors lining up that could really propel Bitcoin to new all-time highs. From a technical perspective, we can also make some bullish arguments. And some of my Bitcoin projections based on Fibonacci extensions lead me to believe that Bitcoin could go over $100,000 in this next cycle. Let's have a look at the chart. Now, let's look at the technical outlook for Bitcoin. Now, as we can see, we're tracking a five wave impulse that we started back in 2019. So basically, the post halving rally that took us to about 60,000 was the top in our wave three. And then we've got a retracement in our wave four. In fact, we can see how this retracement went quite exactly towards that 50% level. So, <clears throat> a typical retracement level for a wave four. And since then, we could make an argument that we have seen initial wave one impulse and a wave two retracement. <clears throat> now, I will say that this is not the most clean Elliott wave structure, but we have enough to count a five wave impulse in a wave one and a retracement in a wave two. So based on this, if we measure the length of our wave one from the top, from the bottom rather of our wave two, then we can project the coming prices for Bitcoin, right? So if we project this from the bottom of wave two, we can see that the 1.618 extension takes us to about 80,000 and the two extension takes us to over 100,000, about 106,000. Now this would arguably be the minimum target we could expect from Bitcoin. Now, zooming into the daily chart, we can also make an argument that we are beginning to complete an impulse to the upside. So we have seen a one, two, I believe we are now topping in a wave three, and we still need a slight retracement in wave four and yet another high in a wave five to complete an initial wave, I've imp wave one impulse. And this wave one would in itself be the first wave one of an impulse that would take us up to about 80,000 in that wave three. So something like this, as you can see, shown in the chart. Let's clear that up a little bit so you can see it better. So in terms of in terms of a trading perspective, of course, I would advise chasing this rally. It could be quite dangerous. And as I'll discuss in a minute, there's still a possibility that Bitcoin could retest lower lows. So from a trading perspective, what you'd really want is to see this impulse complete and then buy the retracement in a wave two. Arguably, I think we could see this initial wave one rally to about 40,000. Now we do have some resistance at that level, so it would be normal to see Bitcoin retrace at that level. And at that point, we might see Bitcoin retrace to about the 50% or 61.8% retracement. So perhaps come back to around the $30,000 level. Again, this would be an obvious place for Bitcoin to find support and a good place to enter a trade in terms of risk reward. However, it's worth mentioning that in previous halving cycles, we've seen a sell-off in Bitcoin ahead of the halving. This was, for example, the case back in 2020, where we saw Bitcoin retrace over 70% from its highs, right? We can see it here. And of course, this was aided by the COVID sell-off and the effects that it had in markets. But this is something that we haven't quite seen happen yet. I could also make an argument that Bitcoin is still finishing an initial five-way structure. So something like this. Now, in this scenario, we would once again probably rally to about 40,000, perhaps a bit higher, but we'd expect a much deeper retracement in a wave two. So we could see Bitcoin perhaps go down to about 24 or even 21,000, which is the 61.8% retracement. Now, this is a lot less bullish in the more immediate term, but a lot more bullish longer term, as this would be an initial impulse in a larger five-wave structure, which would likely take us much higher than 100,000. But the technicals and fundamentals are lining up for a very bullish year or two for Bitcoin. Not only do we have the halving cycle coming up, but we also have a shift in liquidity, not only coming from China, but probably also from now Western nations such as Europe and the US with rate hikes probably peaking and inflation also starting to turn down, perhaps even turning into deflation. So we'll probably see some more monetary stimulus and more liquidity added to the market in coming months, which would certainly be very bullish for Bitcoin. And of course, with the launch of the Bitcoin ETF, institutions are going to start pouring in money into Bitcoin. So I hope you enjoyed my overview on Bitcoin. Let me know if you did by liking, sharing and subscribing. And even if you didn't like it, go ahead and tell me why in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.